challenging niches are niches that include other people who have to make the buying decision. Right. Because you're having two actually different kinds of conversations. However, if I'm sitting here saying to you and you're a parenting coach, you can talk about all the p child's behavior, but at the end of the day, you've got to hook the parent in to make the decision for the buying piece. Right. So how are you going to emotionally engage with that person without underselling the experience for the child? So you're always playing this, this double edge of, i got to meet you where you're emotionally stuck in this problem, and I need to position how I can help you. Wow. I've got to meet you. In where you are emotionally stuck. Yeah. When That's you, important. It's huge, it? because one of the things that I find really interesting about marketing is that because most people think it's something that's outside of them and they don't see it as a continual conversation, mm. is that when they get to the selling position, they shut down. They mm. don't like having a sales conversation. That's, we, as a polite Canadians, are afraid to ask for the sale. Have you noticed that? Um, I find a lot of people do, but be, it's only because of a couple things. Number one, you haven't really s clarified what you offer. Yeah. Yes. So you're really unclear about what you're going to do. Yes. And then if you do sell something, you're not really clear about what you're helping them with, so you're always accommodating to somebody's issue, which is really exhaustive as a solo service professional. Yeah. You're doing, and I, I say this all the time, uh, accommodation will kill your business quickly. There's only, there's only so much time you can do all that brain work for people. You okay, really, accommodate, explain accommodate, accommodation. Um, you're not a retail store or a fast food restaurant. However, even if you were, you have a set menu to work from. Mm -hmm. Well, I find that if some people have their service businesses, because most of us are really good at doing lots of things within our small niche, because we've been doing a lot of things long enough in mm -hmm. our industry, mm -hmm. we walk in and say, oh, because we're in a, we're also, we have to remember, we're business people. We're, we're making our own way. Right. And sometimes the bills are stacking up. Yep. There's the envelopes. And like, oh, my God, I got to get a new client. Yep. I got to get a new patient. What am I going to do here? So we're willing to take on anything. And taking on anything that walks in the door. Oh, that's accommodation. That's accommodating. Ah, okay. I get it. We will accommodate anything. Ah. And the truth of the matter is, you are you got to understand as a small business owner, especially as a solo service, you your highest, um, your highest most valuable asset isn't your time necessarily, because it's not something you can get back. It's going to be the energy that you exert. How much energy is it going to take to solve this problem? If you have to spend a lot of time trying to creatively come up with a solution and it's not something you've dealt with before, it's going to take a lot more of your time and energy and it's going to become very frustrating for you than if it was something that you are very good at doing. Hmm. So that brings another point into the, the idea of marketing for me is actually positioning and expertise. Huh. That you need to understand that there are certain things that you do very, very well and just stick to that. Um, that if you try to water down everything that you do, I call it the a la carte syndrome. I run into that a lot. Well, I can do this, and then I can do that, and then we'll figure it out. It, it really challenges a couple of things. It challenges um, us as the owner or as a service provider. How do I actually sell it? How do I, I mean, what's the price point on all of it? You're nickeling and diming everything that you're doing, and yet you're trying to still meet your and maintain your um, You have your, your monthly expenses. You've got this goal you've got to hit every month as target but if you're nickeling and dime everything you're doing it's very hard to get momentum because you're selling this you're selling that and over there's this and then you're, tr it you're just, chasing your tail you're chasing everything yeah. around and it's much easier to synthesize it and say okay in its finest form these is these are the handful of things that I do and the reason I do them is because they're all part of the system of making the the outcome effective so in a, in a solution situation, I'll use my, my business, for example. When I see, because I primarily work with holistic practitioners, healers, coaches, consultants, and anybody I call a transformational service professional, when I see them saying that they aren't attracting clients, for me, number one, that's just a symptom of a bigger problem. As often there isn't enough clarity about how they're selling, what their offer is, how they can work better, because people can't hear them. So I'm listening all the time for something that's going on. That people may... can't hear them. I love that. People can't hear you most of the Sorry time. Sorry to interrupt, but no. I just, you know, I, well, it's, it's, it's fascinating. I, I, I can listen to you all day. I mean, it's, this is great. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, I hope, well, we might be here all day because I like I, talking. You know <laughs> Let's go. Let's keep stay here all day. I love this stuff. I, 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 that's why you think I created my own job. Because I want to be paid to talk. You and me both, girl. Um, 
Yeah, I explain it this way. When we don't set the criteria of who we really want to work with, and now this is where I'm saying like I'm contradicting myself. 